It's time for our visit with Main Street Magazine on Tuesday mornings right around 7.20, even though it's 7.17. Uh, Thorin Christian's daughter joins us, and we take a look at just some of the stories in uh, this month's episode of Main Street Magazine. Good morning, Thorin. Good morning. How are you? Fine. We had a little bit of rain again at my house last night. That's two nights in a row. Oh, good. So, so my, gra- my, my, my lawn went from totally brown to mixed in green last night, and I'm an- anticipating that there'll be a little more green today. But that's I about, hope so. It's getting pretty crunchy. Oh, gosh, really crunchy. Uh, that's about all the type of rain that we have uh, is really good for. Not, mu- not much for helping the, uh, the, the, the... There's a stream that comes down from Mount Raga behind my back, uh, in my backyard. I've been there, I think, 11 or 12 years now. Bone dry. First time in 12 years. Bone dry. I don't know what this says about the environment, but uh, I don't hear the ducks anymore that <laughs> they used to flood around in there. Right. All right. Let's take a look at uh, some of the stories that you've got. Uh, we uh, got a visit by Mary O'Neill to the Clark. We do. She went to see the new Verdin exhibit, which, uh, well, I told I told Mary before she went that she, um, that it is uh, someone had told me that this might be the most important exhibit that the Clark has ever had um, because of the collection that is there for this Rodin exhibit. And so she went up and met with the uh, fine folks there at the Clark who gave her a tour of it, and she concurred that it's quite special. Um, so she shares a little bit about Rodin and this exhibit in particular. Is it, is it there for a while, or is it, uh, is it something that people should uh, schedule fairly quickly? Uh, I forget, uh, to be honest, when it ends, but it's been going for, um, I think it started early June, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the Clark, is, you know, this, there's so many great museums in our area that are all within about a 45-minute to an hour drive. Uh, and the Clark is one of them. Uh, of course, Mass Mocha and what they do up there is another one. Uh, but, they're, but they're all over the place. And, uh, and, and we're very lucky because they're, they're close at hand. You don't have to travel two and a half, three hours. Uh, to take a look at uh, some some art, whether it's paintings or pictures or sculpture, that you won't see normally. Uh, All right. We will uh, move on to the next story. Finding joy through flow and play. Yeah, Regina um, wrote a little piece about that, about um, you know how life happens sometimes, and and uh, the importance of finding flow, which is something that. Um, Ian Strieber had written about in our May issue about flow in particular and the theory behind flow and how that works in psychology. So Regina here is connecting it more um, with uh, play as well. And, and she talks about her surfing and some of her and her uh, friends' experiences and how they generate their own flow and play in life. Uh, it, it is interesting. And, you know, when you look back at that, like I'm, I'm 69, so I can look it back uh, what I was like even 10 years ago. Uh, and mm-hmm. it, it, it totally changed. And the 10 years before that, it totally changed. Uh, mm-hmm. What I did in my, in my I don't call it private time, but in my time where uh, maybe uh, for five or 10 years, uh, I was a, a wiffle ball addict. Uh, then I went uh, through a bowling phase. Then I went through a golf phase, which really took my time. I used to golf like five days a week. Oh my uh, gosh. And now I'm in my not doing anything, Faye. just enjoying <laughs> my animals and my house. Uh, there you for, go. For, for the time being. That's the phase that I'm going through. But the, the phases are amazing. If you, if you take a look back at, at your lifestyle and think what you do with your free time, it really is amazing how the mm-hmm. way you find things to do. I also like to cook. You know, that's the whole thing. Cooking. Well, is, well, one of the things that she talks about are play personalities. So maybe you can find one there that matches that. <laughs> <laughs> eating a hot dog eating contest, maybe for me. Uh, maybe you're the storyteller. That's one of them, or the director. Yeah, and I, I, I could be the director. I could be mm-hmm. the storyteller, not the director. I, I, I let people boss me around. I can't boss people around. <laughs> That's what people who work with me are a little afraid of me because I get excitable. But they don't take orders. I don't give orders. I really don't. Uh, that's one thing people that work with me. Uh, they, they, they don't mind working with me for that. Mm-hmm. I, your next story is an interesting story. The go-to social media platforms of younger generations. Uh, your kids are always on your phones. Before we start talking about that, I saw a news story yesterday mm-hmm. on a very 
decent restaurant mm-hmm. in New York City that when you go in, they don't take your cell phones, but if you sit at a table and immediately start talking on your cell phones, they won't come over and wait on you until you put the cell phones away. Huh. Good for them. Yeah. Uh, they don't tell you to turn them off, but they they want you to, they, you know, and if you say, how come no one's, well, because of your cell phones. So put your cell phones away and uh, and we'll wait on you. I think that's a, that's, a, that's a pretty interesting thing to do. Well, that's certainly a commentary on our society today. Yeah, it certainly is. <laughs> but let's go back to the story. Your kids are always on your phones. Yeah, so Lindsay wrote this piece, and she kind of uh, dove into <clears throat> some of the main platforms and then um, like TikTok and Instagram and talked a little bit about you know how they um, – what it is that their purpose is and how they kind of work and, you know, who's kind of on their platform to do what. And then she also talked about a new platform called Be Real. And uh, it was funny when I talked to um, my proofreader when we were going over changes to this issue, she uh, was like, I have to tell you, I was, you know, reading this and, you know, this Be Real thing. And she's like, I've never heard of it before. And I said, well, frankly, I, neither had I before Lindsay brought it up. And then she's like, I asked my 13-year-old, hey, do you know about this Be Real? She's like, yeah, Mom, I'm on it right now. So I, I just thought that was pretty funny that, uh, you know, we're obviously at a certain age and weren't aware of it. So this was, you know, interesting just for that fact to learn a little bit about it and, and see some of the changes that have come to other the other platforms. Now, we're going to talk about something that is, just blew me away when I saw it. When mm-hmm. I saw it. It's not a story. It's not a story. It's an ad. <laughs> it's an ad that's in Main Street Magazine. Yes. Restaurant bar space for sale or lease. Millerton, New York. The New York Times. Uh, 52 Main. Yes. That, that's. I, I just about hit the floor when I saw that because that is one of the most popular spots around. It is. And, uh, you know, if people go through changes and and yeah. i think eleanor is looking to her next chapter and uh, as far as i know and um i know covid has you know has had a real impact on her and her business obviously and and she's she's such a hard worker she's there every single day and working and i know she's a little tired um but you know people she loves her patrons and she loves her business you know but i think she's just maybe looking for the next chapter and uh willing to pass the baton uh, to someone who would be interested. Well, that, that's funny because uh, I did have somebody in radio ask me, what, uh, what are you going to sell? Uh, you know, uh, when are you going to get out of the radio business and and, uh, and take it easy and sell it to somebody else? And I and this is another person who is who runs a radio station, and owns a radio station. I looked at him and I said, what would I do? <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah. this, all, this is all I've done my whole life. What would I do? You know that that thought had never even crossed my mind. What would I do uh, for my next yeah. chapter of my life? Seeing as this has been really ever since I got out of high school, this has been my life. So yeah. uh, it's it, it's interesting, and I know restaurant owners face a real tough challenge, exactly because of what happened in COVID, and it's hard to get employees now, even though we're on the rebound from COVID, and you put so much work and effort into it. I can see where where somebody would say, you know. Maybe it's time to move on, but it just it surprised me. That's all. I, uh, an ad that that becomes a basic news story. Yeah, well, you know, the employee <laughs> you can't drive anywhere without seeing a help wanted sign. So yeah. that's not just you know isolated to the restaurant industry. But I know <clears throat> Eleanor's had a, a challenge with that, just like so many of the others around here. And then there's fierce competition for chefs and waitresses or waiters. And uh, so I know that's been a challenge for her for the last couple of years as well. Uh, but she's, you know, she's still maintained her business. And, yeah. and it's, as you said, one of the most popular spots around. And, and I hope it continues. I hope that uh, she, someone else was, is interested in, in keeping it going, keeping the legacy of it going. And it has a hub in, in the center of Millerton. All right, you're right. The uh, most popular signs you see around are help wanted and real estate. <laughs> real estate for yeah. sale. Uh, even though most of the inventory is pretty much gone, uh, that always opens up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think I see more help wanted signs now than real estate signs. But a year ago, it was like 50 50. Okay. I went down the street uh, two, a year and a half ago uh, in, out of uh, Salisbury and Lakeville. And there were 24 houses on that street, and there were 18 for sale signs. Stop it. No. And you know what? Within a month, month and a half, they were all gone. 
It's just been oh tremendous God, turnover. Crazy. Tremendous turnover. On to the next story. Uh, you've got a great story uh, analyzing the impact of rural hospital closures. Save Sharon Hospital from closing its services. Yeah, so we, we, you've had some interviews. You've had yeah. some news reports on this, as has the Lakewood Journal, some of the other publications around, and I felt it was our time to... Uh, to, to have something on the subject because I don't think a lot of people are aware of it despite the efforts of some of the media and, and both Nuvance and the Safe Sharon Hospital group to get the word out and there's a lot of confusion about what's happening. So I had asked Regina to research um, what it you know means for having small hospitals in, in small communities like ours and the impact that they have and she included some statistics about employment and the percentages that hospitals and, and organizations like um, Noble Horizons and, and schools like Hotchkiss what type of employers they are and what they mean to our community and then she looked at um, she tried to find both sides and what Nuvance's stance on a number of the things is as well as the Safe Sharing Hospital group is and, and dive into what the actual issue is and um, so she did that, and, and then we kind of leave it to the reader to dissect from there. But, um, you know, what they're proposing is closing the labor and delivery and um, changing some of the ICU hours, uh, as well as the, um, the OR hours, I believe it was. Um, don't quote me directly on that, because I, I'm not reading the article right now, but Regina has all that information right in there. You know, we, we've tried to, uh, I've, uh, I've interviewed uh, a couple of uh, physicians, and also Victor Germack, uh, who's been involved with Save Sharon Hospital, and he's more on the fiduciary side. And mm-hmm. I've interviewed uh, people from New Vance Health, uh, and uh, there is definitely a, a, a lack of understanding or a misunderstanding by the public yes. uh, what's going on. And that's despite the incredible efforts of Save Sharon Hospital uh, to, to put their points across uh, and... Uh, and there's a there's a misunderstanding, uh, and there's a, a lack of knowledge uh, that has to that bridge has to be gapped uh, for people to understand what it means uh, to uh, have a full service local hospital. So uh, I hope this story helps point that out more to people, and uh, we're going to try to interview more people uh, as well uh, on this because that gap of knowledge has got to be closed. Uh, so so people know the truth about what's going on uh, and hear it from from both sides and and, and understand uh, what health care weighs in the balance. Exactly. And, and I think the impact on our local community is important because if, for example, labor and delivery closes, you know, if you're a high risk pregnancy or if you are having a complication, all of a sudden we're you, you no longer have a 10 or 15 minute drive, but you have to go to where to Great Barrington, Torrington, Poughkeepsie. You know, that's that's a long way to go. And, you know, I just remember, you know, my first pregnancy, how, how scary it was. And the fact that, you know, come to the end of your pregnancy, you're at the doctor's office every other day, it feels like. So just that drive. Um, plus, you know, to me, it's also you go to your OBGYN and then you ask them, OK, where's a pediatrician and when what other service, you know, so it's like you, you create a network. So what happens when you start closing some of those services is is something that, you know, popped out in the article to me and in Regina's research as the trickle-down effect that it will have on our community. All right. These stories and more uh, in this month's edition of Main Street Magazine. Thorne, we'll check in with you uh, again next Tuesday and uh, cover some more of these articles. Sounds fantastic. Have a great week. Take care. Uh, Thorne, Christian Dodder, Main Street Magazine. Uh, joins us here with Main Street Magazine on Robin Hood Radio.